Hi, Elliot here. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll probably understand by now that Recipe Robot is a great way to create new auto package recipes. But Recipe Robot can also be a great tool for auditing and improving your existing auto package recipes. I'll show you how using some old recipes I wrote for coconut battery. The first thing I'm going to do is use the PLUtil tool to convert my old recipes to the same style Recipe Robot uses. This makes it easier to compare the differences later. But first, one thing to watch out for. If you have any HTML style inline comments, like the above, you'll want to convert them to a comment key value pair, like the below. If you don't do this before running PLUtil, you'll lose the comments, so make sure to check for anything like this and update it before you start. Once you've done that, you can run PLUtil dash convert XML1 and then the path to your recipes. In this case, I've specified star.recipe because I want it to affect all the recipes in the current folder. It won't return any output, but if it goes to the next line, you know that it's done. Now, let's grab the core of the download recipe, the sparkle feed or download URL, and we'll feed it back into Recipe Robot. If your old recipes for this app are public, you'll need to use the ignore existing argument like I've done here, so that Recipe Robot doesn't give up when it sees that recipes already exist. Once Recipe Robot has produced a fresh recipe set, we can compare the old with the new. You can use the free Text Wrangler app to do this, or you can use a more advanced diff tool. I'm using Kaleidoscope here. So you can see that the recipes are pretty similar. There are some minor differences and I'm going to apply some of them but not all of them. My old recipe is the one on the left and the new recipe the recipe robot created is the one on the right. So anything that's showing up in green is something that recipe robot created that wasn't in my original one. And you can see the first thing that showed up there was the description of the recipe. I actually like that a little bit better. Uh, I like Recipe Robots a little bit better than the one that I picked. So I applied it back to the left to my recipe. The Sparkle Feed URL is specified uh, hard-coded on my recipe on the left. It's uh, using a variable uh, input, input key um, on the right. I think that's equivalent, so I'm not going to apply that. You can also see that the minimum version on mine is 0.2.0 for auto package. The minimum version that Recipe Robot always uses is 0.5.0. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to bump my recipe up to 0.5.0 at this time, so I'm going to leave that alone. And basically I'm just going to scroll through here and um, apply anything that I like and ignore anything that I don't like. So you can take Recipe Robot's recipes as suggestions and take what you want and ignore the rest. Here on the right, highlighted in green, you can see the Recipe Robot automatically used code signature verification. In order to do that, it also had to use the unarchiver processor to unzip the app so that it can compare it to the code signature it has on file. That's great. I think that's a great idea for download recipes to do generally. So I am going to apply this suggestion back to my original recipe. Because the unarchiver processor is now in the download recipe, all the recipes that are based on that download recipe also need to be changed to remove the unarchiver processor from them. We'll go to the install recipe next and compare. And you can see in pink on the left, the unarchiver is no longer needed. So I'll just remove that. Now we'll go to the monkey recipe. I'm going to take the description from Recipe Robot. I'm also going to remove the unarchiver processor from here. And I'm going to add the developer, uh, the developer name Christoph Sinai, because Recipe Robot picked up on that. That's something that I missed in my original recipe. And finally, we'll go to the PKG uh, package recipe. I'll take the description again.
Recipe Robot also included the bundle ID as an input variable. I think uh, mine has it hard coded, but I actually like using uh, input variables for bundle IDs. So I will take that suggestion from Recipe Robot. And again, I'm going to remove the unarchiver processor since that's now in the download recipe. I think those are all the changes I need to make. So I can save my updated recipes and uh, republish those to GitHub. Newly improved thanks to Recipe Robot.